What's up everybody? Welcome to day 10. I'm pretty much picking up where we left off of last video. We're trying to get ourselves back ahead of the game. Um, tonight I'm gonna try to tackle our guest bedroom because as you guys know we bought a desk and we're gonna kind of revamp this more into an office space instead of a bedroom because Quite honestly, we've never had anybody stay with us. This has kind of been like a catch-all room for all of our crap. And there's a bed underneath that, but no one ever stays in it. So I'm gonna get this room put back together and then kind of clear out the space, cl try to clear out the bed if I can, because our desk should be here tomorrow. So that is what I am going to do tonight. Okay. Guys, I think I was able to get this all done right before the sun goes down. But can we take a moment to notice how good my Dyson vacuum freaking vacuums the floor? So our thought is that the desk is going to go pretty much right there. I rearranged my shoes. I actually added one more row, so I shifted everything over, added more. Markel's got to figure out something with her side because I think she's getting a little out of hand. It makes it hard though with that window unless we just start stacking it. I'm pretty excited for this desk to come. Finally, I'm excited because we finally have figured out what exactly it is we're going to be doing in that room. So I'm really, really excited. Keen? Hello. Keen? Mm -hmm. Keen? It is freezing in this room. Mm -hmm. Remember when you had to sleep in here the other night? Yeah. Sick. I didn't kick her out of the bed. I was just sick. It was right before Black Friday and I couldn't get sick. Yeah. We have to use a string light, obviously, to light this room. Look, her stacks of shoes look so much better. These I think she's trying to replace to put on that. You gonna get blanky? Oh cool. It is freezing in here. These stacks, if you guys look back, they used to actually be almost to cover those frames. We are going to do a little shoe tour type thing again for you guys. We're trying to figure out how that we want to do this because we can't obviously go over every single shoe. So we will base them off of our favorite, like, he just wants to play. Can we not playing right now? Okay. Cause a lot of people ask like, I want a really comfortable shoe for work. I'm on my feet all the time. So pick one of those. Oh, like, okay. Because I'm on my feet like, all the time. Ooh, you're comfy. on your feet. Yeah. Or like one or two. Okay. One of our most prized possession ones. Sure. Okay. Okay. Pick yours. Pick yours. Pick yours. Okay. Let's both grab our most comfortable that we would suggest if you're on your feet all day. Okay. This is the Nike Zoom Pegasus 35 Turbo. This is made with one of the softest foams in it. It's called Zoom X. This is actually what they made. I don't know if any of you guys are aware that Nike tried to break the two hour mark. And they used- For a marathon. For a marathon. And they use this Zoom X foam because it is lightweight and it gives you the most return energy back to your foot pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty. It's like wearing a cloud on your feet. I was very, very surprised at how comfortable those are, yeah. and I've heard really great things about people who are actually running in them, too. Yeah. We haven't run in ours, no. but... I don't know that I want to, because they're pretty. Yeah, I agree. This is the first colorway they came out with, so if I do get those for running, I would get a different pair. Yeah, just and... Just to keep those. This is actually what I wore in New York, around New York, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So, and also, like, to just go with these, because... Like, this is a higher price point, I would say, for a Pegasus. They, it I, is a very high price yeah, point. Yeah. Um, I also really just like the Nike Pegasus as well. Yeah. You can find Pegasus. Right now they're on the 35, but in most, like, factory stores, you can find the 34s for a pretty good price. Yeah. And the Pegasus is still a great, great shoe. This is just, like, a, yeah. a way big upgrade. If you're really, really into sneakers and looking for a comfy shoe and you don't mind dropping 180, yeah, this is a great shoe. It's amazing. But if you're looking for something cheaper, 
going with the normal peg is this is great too. The peg is actually a shoe that I own quite a few in just because it is all around comfortable. I and like it a lot. my sisters are obsessed with it. My sisters are obsessed with the Pegasus. To go along with the Pegasus, this shoe right here is the Vimero 12. They have, they were on the 13. They just barely came out with the 14 actually. Really? So this is a couple models back, but really any model of the Vimero is really, really great. This is kind of like the big brother to the Pegasus and I've never had any trouble with a Vimero. So that's one that I'd recommend for running. It's a great running performance shoe, as well as if you wanna wear it casual, standing on your feet all day, walking around a lot. Vimero's a great shoe. You guys know that we've talked a lot about how Nike comes out with a line every June for Pride Month called Be True. Um, the money that they make for that, they donate some proceeds to LGBTQ plus charities. It's very near and dear to my heart. Um, this was one that they released this last June for the uh, Be True line. They used the triangle for a lot of it. I don't remember if I showed these or not, but this is the Epic React. Um, React Foam is one of their newer foams. It's not as premium as Zoom X. It's just like one step below it. React is very, very comfortable, great energy return. Um, durable, all that good stuff. So I had to show something with React because that's very comfortable too. These are called the Air Max 197 Volt Forward Sean Watherspoons. So the 197 is essentially what he did was he created the Air Max 1 bottom with the Air Max 97 top. You can see kind of the quality of it. So this is actually like a corduroy the way it is. And the, he designed it to ultimately to fray. He let, he wants them, he likes his to fray, which I don't think I'll ever get it to the point that they'll fray. And I've actually, like, I've, I've seen Sean Watherspoon say that. Like, I love the way these look when they get worn and frayed and stuff. But then I've actually heard, like, I've read a lot of posts, like, sneaker posts about it that was like, don't do that to these. One, because this is a great shoe, don't mess it up. Yeah. But two, that it doesn't wear that great. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, so. so. I don't think I'll ever get to the point that these will fray. They also come with, th this on the front is actually a Velcro sticker that you can interchange it to Velcro actually, the patch. Velcro patch, <laughs> that you can interchange it into a, just the Nike swoosh. Also came with a couple different lace colors. I don't think I'll ever change it. I've thought about just to see like what it'll look like. Yeah, so you can change it out. Well, what is your shoe, Markel? Um, mine <laughs> is unfortunate because I can't even wear it. My shoe is the Air Jordan 1 Off-White collab in the Carolina Blue colorway. So they did a surprise release with these on the sneaker app and luckily one of my coworkers like, got a notification about it immediately. So. A ton of us at work got these. Um, Off-White is basically like a fashion brand. It's very sought after. Yeah. They do collaborations with a lot of brands. Nike is one that they do really frequently. And everything that they do is like gold to people. Like this shoe right now I think is reselling for $1,000, give or take. And... Which yeah. is also unfortunate because they don't fit her and she cannot resell them. Exactly. So I was, because it was a surprise release, I was just so flustered that I just like sent it through to payment to try to get in line and get them. And these run big. So the size that I normally get is a half size too big in these. So I can't even wear them. I can't sell them because I work at Nike and while you are employed by Nike you can't sell anything Nike just to make sure you're not like taking advantage of your discount and the brand so these are just sitting in a box yeah. and I don't know what I'll do with them maybe one day I won't work for Nike and I, I don't know I would love to trade them and get my size but that's hard to do too so then I've got this beautiful beautiful Grail status shoe just sitting in the box. Okay, we are gonna show you guys the oldest shoe that we have in our collection. Which we've had a bunch that would be older than yes. this, but we've gotten rid of yeah. them. So this is like 
still in our collection this is the oldest shoe because uh, this is one that like it's old and i don't wear it because i would it feels like i'm strapping a piece of wood to my feet it's I not very comfortable know. i'll wear it every once in a while if it's like just like to the store and back but to wear all day not a chance so this is actually the air max one Hyperfuse. Hyperfuse. So if if you look at it, I don't know how much you can see that, but there's actually no stitching. It's all fused. It's all fused together. It's basically like they would take layers of material and use high heat and fuse it together. Hyperfuse was really, really big. Yeah. Five-ish years, maybe more. This... Back is actually also my very, very first pair of Air Max. And that is one of the biggest reasons I will not get rid of them. Yeah. Is because it was the very first Air Max that I ever bought. I actually bought this from Markel's store even before you worked there, maybe. I think it was right when I had started Right when you started. On. I remember buying them and I remember going home and putting them on and then taking Kenai out for a walk and going, holy shit, these are uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know what it is about, because obviously I love Air Max, and the Air Max 1 is my this favorite This one shoe. is, though, compared to but, others. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know if it's the foam or just the way that, like, the fusing made the shoe, like, it's really it's rock stiff. hard. It's rock hard. I don't hard. know, but it made it so uncomfortable. The foam is not comfortable. Because other Air Maxes I can wear all day, yeah, me too. and I, it's, like, they're, they're fairly comfortable, but this one, it's like wearing a board on your feet. Yeah. But it does have a lot of meaning to me, and it's pretty special to me that it was my very first Air Max that I've ever bought. You have this shoe as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, my oldest shoe that I still have in my collection is the Lunar Glide 4 Plus. I think it'll have a plus in there. Live Strong. The Live Strong really tells you how old this is. Yes. It was made. Nike shoes have a date of when they were made on the inside, the white tag. This was made July of 2012. Um, I bought this shoe from my store before I worked at my store. I was actually working for a company called Finish Line. They do still have some finish lines around. It's like a foot locker if you haven't heard of it. Um, and I wanted to get some Lunar Glides because the Lunar Lawn foam was the softest at the time. Really comfortable, it's a good foam still. And the Lunar Glide is made for people who pronate because they have this called dynamic support here. It's a more dense wedge that they put on the inside of the shoe to um, help kind of correct that motion of over pronation, which is your foot turning inward. So I wanted to get the Lunar Glide to help with my over pronation and have a comfortable shoe for work. And so the employee discount wasn't that great at finish line, so I went to check the Nike outlet and they had these for a better price than I could get them with my discount at finish line. So I bought these and I liked the Live Strong. This was before yes. Lance Armstrong got in some trouble and I wore the crap out of it to work and everything. I loved it. I loved the yellow. Now I'm, I think they're kind of hideous, but it's a shoe that I don't want to get rid of because it's just so funny and I remember I remember going into the store and buying these and talking to a guy who ended up being a big part of my Nike career. So yeah, these just like, you don't get rid of these even though they're uncomfortable. These ones, even though I probably will never wear them, just um, yeah, they just make me think about how everything yeah. just kind of came full, full circle. So that is a little peek into our shoe collection that we have. Um, maybe we'll do some again showing different shoes. We do have a lot. So a lot of you, hopefully this isn't too boring. If it is, I'm sure you're gone by now, but a lot of people do have questions about Nike shoes if you're looking like to get you some or why we like certain yeah. ones that we do. So hopefully that answered a little bit of questions. If you have more, leave them down in the comments and we'll try to get to it. Um, because I love that you guys like to get Nikes too. Yeah. That makes me happy. So Yeah, and if you guys happy to help, tag us in pictures as well. That if you guys get new Nikes, I love seeing the pictures or seeing the shoes that you guys are buying. I love seeing that. So thank you guys for watching. We love you. Happy Vlogmas. We'll see you tomorrow.
Bye. Bye. You didn't do your wave. I did. It was just high. You can't see. You have to show it. Bye. There you go.